everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the topic uh, heat transfer. So let me start by giving you the quote of the day which states that patience is not defined by how long we wait. Rather, it is defined by what you do while in the process of waiting. So we'll discuss that quote at the end of our class. So today we'll first discuss the molecular explanation of uh, convection in uh, fluids. So molecules in fluids uh, are further apart and have negligible cohesive forces. That is the force of attraction between molecules of the same kind. So heating a fluid increases the kinetic energy of the vibrating molecules and their random movement. Remember when we heat uh, particles of matter, they gain kinetic energy. Therefore, because kinetic energy is the energy in motion, it causes the particles to vibrate or move from one region to another. So as the fluid rises, remember when we talk of a fluid, we mean either a liquid or a gas. So as the fluid rises, these molecules pass energy to the molecules in the colder regions which have less energy which have less energy so because the molecules are further away from the heating source that is in our fluids uh, their temperature is therefore reduced meanwhile the pressure near the heating source decreases because of depletion of molecules as they rise so colder molecules move into low pressure zones to fill up the void uh, being created by the warm air which is actually rising or by the warm molecules which are rising so cumulatively this movement of molecules constitutes what we call the convectional currents so convectional currents are set up much faster in gases than in liquids because the extremely low cohesive forces existing between the molecules of the gases so how are these convectional currents are, are created so when you heat one part of the liquid or one part of the fluid the molecules gain kinetic energy remember kinetic energy is the energy in motion so when molecules gain kinetic energy it means their volume increases therefore they become less dense remember from this formula whenever you increase the volume you will always obtain a smaller value of density because you are increasing the denominator while holding the mass constant now whenever volume is increased density is decreased so uh, lighter materials or materials which have low density they will always float so remember that when you increase also the volume you will uh, learn this further in uh, form 3 the last topic about the boil slow uh, where you will see that whenever volume increases the pressure is actually decreased so because of the high pressure by the cold molecules which are at the lower regions it means that now now the heated molecules which are now lighter or which have a larger volume therefore they have a low density and therefore they have a low pressure it means they will move they will move into a low pressure zone into a low pressure zone therefore they float upwards so as they move upwards there is a void or an empty space which is left by those molecules that is the space which is filled by the cold molecules e.g for example like for the case of what water so the as long as the water or the molecule uh, the particles as are heated continuously it means there will be that random motion of the molecules that is the cold molecules because they are denser they replace uh, the place left by the uh, hot rising what molecules so that continuous movement of the molecules a result of heating which increases the volume thereby reducing the density and pressure is what causes what we call the convectional what currents so we look at uh, various applications of uh, convectional currents we look at uh, applications of convection in fluids so our first application is in domestic hot water system so here is a typical diagram that can be used uh, to explain how a domestic hot water system actually works so notice that we have two beakers beaker a and also beaker b here then we have a thermometer to detect any increase or a decrease in temperature so initially uh, initially the two beakers that is beaker a and uh, beaker b they are filled with cold water so initially water in beaker b and water in beaker a are usually uh, cold 
So uh, we usually color the water in Bika in Bika A so as to distinguish it uh, or to differentiate it from the water in Bika B. So when the water in Bika A is heated, so remember we have a source of heat here which is heating the water in this Bika B. So when the water in B, in Bika A, so the, when the water in Bika A is actually heated, remember heating is accompanied by gain in kinetic energy. Therefore, the molecules move further apart, increasing their volume. So remember from here, whenever the volume increases with constant uh, mass, it means the density reduces. So when the density reduces or when the volume increases, also from the boil slow, the pressure reduces. So it means the heated water, which has actually increased in volume and therefore reduced in density, it means it is now lighter. So it means that the cold water from Bika uh, B above here is now more denser than the water in Bika A, which has been heated, therefore becoming lighter or reducing its density. So when the water in Bika A is heated, when the water in Bika A is heated, is heated it is observed uh, to rise up uh, through tube X and emerges on the top of cold water in Bika B. So when the uh, water in Bika A is heated, uh, its volume increases, therefore its density reduces and also its pressure actually does what? Uh, reduces. Well, so when the density is reduced, it means now this water is lighter and therefore it rises up through this tube uh, X, uh, through the tube X, it rises up this way and it emerges uh, on the top of the cold water that is actually in Bika B. So at the same time, the cold water in Bika B, now this water actually, uh, the cold water in Bika B uh, flows down uh, from Bika B to Bika A. So remember, as the hot water from Bika A, which has been heated, is rising up, it is leaving a gap or a void in Bika A. Therefore, the cold water being more denser because it is not heated, uh, therefore it means it has a, a low volume, therefore its density is large. Uh, so because it is more denser, it actually uh, flows downwards through tube Y this way, in this manner, to Bika A. That is to fill the void or the space left by the rising water, uh, the rising heated water, by the rising heated water. So the cold water flows down uh, from Bika B to Bika A. So as long as there is continuous heat supply, as long as, as, long as there is continuous heat supply, that is heating the water in Bika A, it means there will be movement of hot water into Bika B, and cold water will flow down into Bika A. So a thermometer in Bika B can be used, actually will show some increase in temperature of the water in Bika B, showing that the water in Bika B has actually, its temperature has in increased. So we also color it so that when the water rises up, we can actually see it. So this demonstrates that indeed there are convectional currents in uh, water. So in summary, you have just said that a domestic hot water system, that is if you want to obtain uh, continuous hot water, you just set up the apparatus as shown in this diagram. So in Bika A, the water in Bika A is uh, heated. When it is heated, actually its volume increases, therefore its density reduces. So when the density reduces from the boil slow, its pressure also reduces. So because now the cold water here, it is at a higher pressure than the heated water, the, the warm water here, it means the warm water because it is less dense, it has a low density, it rises up, it is forced to rise up through tube X and emerges uh, uh, through tube X on the top of the water in Bika B. So remember, this hot water will always float because the water in Bika B at the lower end, it is cold water, which has more density. So remember, lighter materials will always float while denser materials will always uh, sink. So the cold water remains at the bottom while the hot water remains on the top because it is less dense. So at the same time, because there is space that has been left by the rising uh, hot water, it means the cold water now from here, which is in Bika B from down here, it will flow downwards to replace the space left by the uh, uh, hot water rising from Bika A. So as long as there is a heat supply here, it means that when the cold water gets here, it is also heated, therefore it rises upwards. So it means the flow of the 
water will be continuous so this shows that there are convectional currents in what in uh, fluids there are con fluids so we also look at uh, another application here uh, which involves now the domestic hot water system but at commercial for commercial purposes so the commercial domestic hot water system uh, it, it also utilizes the same principle of what convectional currents so the hot water rises up because of the effective lowering of its density so remember here we have the heat heating uh, the boiler here warming up the water in the boiler so here when the water gets into the boiler it is heated up now remember when the water is heated up it means it will expand that is its volume increases at the same time when the volume increases it means the density its density will reduce because density is equal to mass over volume so therefore it means whenever you keep a uh, mass constant but increase the volume it means you will obtain a smaller value of what density so when water is heated uh, in the boiler it actually becomes less dense and also because its volume has increased from the boil slow it means its pressure will also uh, reduce remember from boil slow uh, volume will vary inversely proportional with the, uh, the pressure so because of the reduced pressure and because of the lower density over the warmed water it means actually the water rises what the water rises upwards so the hot water rises up because of the effective uh, lowering of its what density because of the effective lowering of the density so the warm water or the hot water actually rises up in the tube this way from the boiler it comes this way so it floats remember the the water down here is uh, the cold water from the cold water tank so the warm water will always float uh, or the hot water will always float on the cold water because it has a lower density remember heating involves increase in volume therefore reducing the density so because its density is low it will always float uh, on the cold water so it rises up this tube so the hot water rises up because of the effective lowering of its density now at the same time the force of gravity remember this is a cold water tank so there is cold water being supplied from the main pipe to this cold water uh, tank so here we are obtaining the hot water so the hot water rises then it is actually tapped here so this tap you will only obtain the hot water here so we have uh, the cold water here in this tank so the cold water is moved downwards because of the force of gravity that's why we have placed it at a higher ground so that we have what we call the gravitational potential which is given by mgh you will understand that when you get to form three so the force of gravity helps the cold water uh, to flow down from the cold water tank so this the cold water in the cold water tank flows down because of what the gravity because of the gra gravity so it flows downwards up to from the into the cylinder and down up to the boiler up to the boiler actually so you should also notice that the top part of the cylinder contains hot water uh, which lowers uh, uh, while the lower part contains the cold water so we are saying that the cold water from the tank passes through the cylinder so the, the the water down in the cylinder here it is actually cold which is more denser but the the water at the upper part of the cylinder it is a uh, it has a low density because that is a hot water or the warm water so it will it will always float on the uh, surface of what uh, the cold water so uh the hot water tap and the extension pipe so this is what we are calling the hot water tap then this is what we are calling the uh expansion pipe what we call the expansion pipe so the expansion pipe um the hot water tap and the expansion pipes are connected to the upper region of the cylinder so they are usually connected to the upper regions of this cylinder so the expansion pipe is an outlet for excess water that could have resulted from overheating so if there is overheating in the boiler the excess water actually flows through the expansion pipes and it is taken back to the uh, cold water tank back to the cold water tank so once the cold water that is in the cold water tank uh, flows down the cylinder it means there is a gap 
there is a uh, one the water flows downwards it means now there is less water here now the question is how is the water refilled uh, in the cold water tank so that the process is continuous so the main pipe remember this is what we are calling our main pipe so um uh -huh, the main pipe allows more cold water to flow into the cold water tank so this main pipe uh, whenever water decreases in the cold water tap the main the main pipe supplies uh, more cold water into the cold water tank so when filled to the capacity when the cold water tank is filled to the capacity with the cold water the ball cork this is what we are calling the ball actually uh cork floating on the surface of the water closes a valve in the main pipe so automatically when it is the tank is filled to the brim the this cork uh, uh, the ball cock which is floating on the water it automatically closes a valve it closes a valve in this uh, here is our valve it closes the valve in the main pipe thereby stopping a uh, further inflow of what cold water so an overflow pipe lets out water from the cold water tank when the valve is not sufficiently in operational so we are what we are saying here is that water is simply heated in the boiler because of when it is heated its density reduces because of its increased volume and uh, low pressure the uh, hot water actually flows from this pipe it comes this way because it is lighter therefore it rises up because its density is low therefore it moves upwards uh, past the cylinder which has, has actually uh, a tap and uh, an expansion pipe connected to it so the hot water actually flows through the tap so it can be collected here but in case we have overheating of water the water rises upwards and it is taken back to the uh, cold water tank where the process again uh, is repeated where the process is repeated so it is important to know that within the cylinder we have cold water downwards then the warm or hot water upwards because it is lesser dense because it is less dense so that is how the commercial domestic hot water system actually uh, works out then uh, we also look at uh, what we another application what we call the ventilation the ventilation now what is ventilation so ventilation simply means is the supply of fresh air to a room the process of supplying fresh air to a room that is taking out the uh, warm air and uh, allowing the cold air to come in so that there is continuous uh, flow of air within the room so how does it actually uh, work out how does it work out so remember that uh, air expelled by the room occupants that is the people so here is just a rough diagram of a room having a window and then a door then we have some openings here for ventilation uh. so uh, air expelled uh, that is air breathed out uh, by the room occupants that is the people within the room is warmer and less dense so because that is air from the lungs uh, so it is warmed by the body and when it is warm it means it has actually expanded therefore its volume is low and therefore it means when whenever the volume is low it means the density is also low and at the same time uh, the pressure is also low so because uh, so because the cold uh, the, the hot air that is from the lungs of a human being or the people within that room is warmer and has actually expanded and its density is low it means it will actually float on the cold water so because of its low density it rises upwards so it rises upwards and actually escapes through the ventilation holes which are left at the uh, top part of the door and also at the top parts of some actually windows within a room now remember as the hot air actually leaves the cold air gets in through the room from the lower parts because it is more denser it means it actually sinks or uh, yeah it sinks or that's why it flows it it enters through the the lowest parts the uh, near the ground because it is actually denser it is cold and therefore its density is high and at the same time it is also at a higher pressure it is at a higher pressure because uh, its volume is low so the warm air 
from the lungs actually escapes because it is less dense therefore it floats upwards and escapes from the room through the uh the the openings uh, we at the upper part of the door so whenever you see these gaps uh, at the upper parts of the door they are actually meant for ventilation they are meant for ventilation then at the lower parts of the door actually the cold air enters the room that is to replace uh, the space left by the warm air which is uh, moving out of the room so because of this convectional current this allows a uh, continuous supply of fresh air fresh cold air and leaving of the uh, warm air from the room so this ensures that there is continuous supply of fresh air within a room there is continuous supply of fresh air within so another application uh, of convectional current is what we call the car engine cooling system the car engine cooling system so here is a diagram actually showing the car cooling uh, heating system so it has some copper fins here which are blackened remember copper is a good conductor of what heat then we also have some air being uh, passed here at very high pressures we have a cup we have a fan here is the engine then we have uh, cold water and hot water so heat conduction and convection they play a very crucial role uh, of taking away heat from a car engine that would otherwise reduce its what efficiency so uh, the engine here is the our engine here it is usually surrounded by a metal water jacket that is connected to a, radi a radiator this is what we call we are calling a metal uh, a metal uh, jacket yeah this is what we are calling a metal water jacket so the engine is usually surrounded by a metal uh, which allows continuous flow of water around it hence enhancing the cooling so the metal surface so remember metal are good conductors of heat so it means the metal surface conducts away heat from the engine so here is the engine so because a metal is a good conductor of heat it conducts away heat from the engine thereby cooling it so this heats up the water so remember within the metal there is water actually flowing this is cold water so the metal absorbs heat from the engine or it conducts away heat from the engine so that heat it is used to heat the cold water therefore the water becomes warmer therefore the water becomes warmer so it means there is a region of the heated water and you also have continuous supply of cold water now remember when air is uh, when water is heated its volume increases therefore its density reduces and also its pressure also uh, reduces now it means now the cold air is at a higher pressure than the warm air remember we are saying that density is mass over volume so whenever we increase the volume the density is low and from also the boil slow whenever the volume is uh, large it means the pressure is also low so it means the cold air is at a greater pressure than the hot air so because of that imbalance in the pressure between the cold water which is at a higher pressure than the hot water which is at a low pressure because of that imbalance in the pressure and the densities of these two uh, water waters that is the cold and the hot water that is what causes the continuous flow or circulation of the water in the uh, metal water cylinder surrounding the engine so we are saying that the metal surface conducts away heat from the engine so uh, this heats up the water thus setting up convectional what currents so the hot water is pumped into the radiator so the radiator is actually here the this part so this hot water is pumped into the uh, radiator which has thin uh, the copper film so here is the radi radiator then we have the copper films so the copper films copper remember copper is a good conductor of heat so it conducts away actually the hot the heat in the hot water that is entering this uh, radiator so the hot water is pumped into the radiator which has a uh, uh, thin copper films that conduct away heat from the water so also fast flowing air past the fins speed up the cooling process so we also have air fast moving air which is passed on the fins which also 
helps to enhance or to increase the rate of what cooling so it means when the water goes through the hot water goes through this uh, radiator it is cooled therefore that's why you are seeing we have cold water going back so the process continues thereby the engine is cooled in that manner therefore the engine is cooled in that manner uh, lastly we look at uh, what we call the land and sea breeze the land and sea breeze now what is the land and sea breeze so land and sea breeze this is just uh, a natural uh, convection of what air it is a natural convection of air that is warm air and cold air moving appropriately because of the indifference in the volume and pressures and also their densities so land and sea breeze actually occurs especially at seashores uh, because of the temperature difference between the masses of water and the land now remember this the mass of water takes much longer time than the nearby land to be heated at the same temperature by the sun so we are saying that land will will be heated faster and it also loses heat faster but the water will take time to be heated but it also takes time to lose that heat so water also uh, takes a longer time to cool than the land after being raised at the same temperature so the important point to note here is that land always at the same temperature the land is heated faster and also on cooling it loses heat faster at the same same temperature water is heated slower that is it absorbs heat slower but it also takes time to lose that heat so it, the water takes heat slowest but also releases heat slowest but the land takes heat faster and it also releases heat what faster now we have two types of uh, breezes we have what we call the sea breeze and the land breeze now remember that the sea breeze will always take place during daytime that is in most cases when there is sun but uh, land breeze will always take place at night so let's discuss what we are calling the sea breeze so here is a diagram demonstrating the same so during the daytime during the daytime the land heats up much faster than the sea so we are saying that at the same temperature the land will absorb heat from the sun faster than the sea now uh, so the air just above the land gets heated up and rises because of the reduced density so the land absorbs heat faster than the sea at the same temperature when it absorbs heat it means the air above the land is actually heated faster than the air above the sea so when the air above the land is heated faster now remember when the air is heated it expands or its volume increases now when the vo whenever the volume increases or when the air expands it means its density is reduced at the same time the pressure also reduces so because its density is low it means that air will actually rise up or it floats up because its density is lower than the uh, cold air which is now denser so we are saying that during the daytime uh, the land heats up much faster than the sea so the air just above the land gets heated up and rises because of the reduced density because of the reduced density now cold air above the sea now we have cold air here remember the warm air is rising so there is a void or a gap which is left here which has to be filled so because there is a gap left by the rising warm air it means the cold air will be sucked or will move to fill the place uh, or the region left by the or the gap left by the warm rising air so the cold air actually is blown uh, towards the land that's why you are seeing the direction uh, of the movement of air is actually in this direction so actually it means the air will be moving in this uh, direction which we actually call the anti anti clockwise direction anti because it is going in opposite direction to that of the clock remember anti anti means the opposite so anti clockwise anti clockwise but clockwise means it will be moving in the same direction as the clock so in short here if you are asked to explain how a land breeze a sea breeze takes place so you just say that it mo in most cases it takes place at daytime when the uh, when there is sun or uh, yeah or during the daytime the land warms up faster than the uh, sea therefore as the land warms up it heats the air above it which expands and its re density reduces therefore rises up cold air now 
uh, being more denser and uh, it moves it is blown towards the land uh, to fill the space or the void left by the rising uh, warm air so during the daytime the land heats up much faster than the sea so this air just above the land gets heated up and rises uh. it gets heated up and rises because of the reduced density now cold air the cold air which is now above the sea uh, blows towards the land it is blown uh, towards the land blows towards the land to replace the void being created by the warm rising air so the process continues uh, the process becomes what continuous as, as long as the the land is still being what warm because when this cold air when the cold air actually is moved here remember the land is still hot uh, so that cold air is also heated uh. now the warm rise raised air now as the cold air comes here that warm air now uh, that came from the land comes here so because the sea is colder it is again made colder so when the that cold air from the uh, sea gets here it is also heated and rises up so the cold air here again replaces uh, again replaces the air that has risen here so you find that the process is actually continuous the process is continuous so that is the uh, sea breeze so secondly we lo we also look at what we call the land breeze what we call the land breeze now it is important to know that the land breeze will always take place at night or in the evening so in the evening uh, the temperature of seawater is higher than that of the land why in the evening the temperature of seawater is higher than that of the land why because we have said that the the, the sea sea waters they absorb heat slower but they also take time to lose heat but the land absorbs heat faster but it, it also loses heat what faster so at night when the temperatures are low it means the land will lose heat faster than the sea so it means at night the sea is actually warmer than the land uh, when you are in coastal regions uh, when you go to swim uh, at night you realize that the water feels somehow warmer i've practically done this and it is actually true you can also try and see even just uh, water in a tap uh, at night it seems somehow warmer than during the daytime so it is because of the land and what sea breezes so because the masses of water or the sea loses heat slowest than the land it means at night the sea will have much heat than the land which has lost a lot of heat so it means because the sea is now warmer the air above the sea is now heated faster than the air above the land so when the air above the sea is heated it its density reduces because its volume has increased now when the density reduces it means it will move what upwards huh? it will be blown upwards because of what low density or it floats on the cold air so as this uh, warm heated air by the sea rises upwards there is a void huh? or a gap that it leaves here without air so the cold air from the land now is blown towards the sea that is to fill the void huh? left by the warm rising air which is heated by the sea so remember whenever the cold air again gets here it is also heated by the sea and the process actually continues uh, uh, henceforthly so in the evening the temperatures of the sea uh, water is higher than that of the land because this the land loses heat faster at night so the air above the sea uh, the air above the sea gets heated up and rises uh. so cold air from the land the cold air now from the land here uh, is blown towards the sea uh, to uh, fill the gap uh, or the void left by the warm rising air so that is what we call the what the land breeze so that is what we call the land breeze so in summary we have said that sea breeze takes place during daytime so uh, and during daytime the land heats up faster than the sea when the land heats up it uh, heats the air above it which becomes uh, warm therefore its volume increases and the density reduces when the density reduces it means it is now lighter it floats on the cold water or it rises what upwards at the same time the cold air the cold air from the sea uh, is blown towards the land to fill the void uh, left by the warm rising air now during night uh, or in the evening when the temperatures are low 
Now the sea loses heat slower than the land. So it means the land at night loses heat faster than the sea. So it means when the sea is warmer, the air above the sea will be warmed by the warm sea. So when the, the air above the sea is actually heated, its, dens its volume increases, its density reduces, therefore it rises upwards. So the void left by the warm air rising is filled by the cold air which is blown towards the sea. So the process continues uh, henceforthly. So uh, in, uh, uh, in land breeze which occurs at uh, night, you realize that the movement of the air is in the clockwise direction. That is this direction. So clockwise is from the word a clock. If you observe a clock keenly, you realize it moves in this direction. So this is the clockwise direction, but the up one is the anti-clockwise direction. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we cannot end the class uh, without uh, discussing the quote of the day. Without discussing the quote of the day. Now, how did the quote of the day actually state? So, the quote of the day actually told us that sometimes uh, it is better to be prepared for an opportunity that never comes than an opportunity to find when you are not prepared for it. So, it means that you have to be prepared uh, even for the best and for the worst in life. In life, you have to be prepared for everything. So, it is better for you to prepare for an opportunity that never comes uh, than for an opportunity to find you when you are not prepared for it. Although the quote itself actually said that patience is not defined by how long you wait. Uh, rather, it is defined by what you do while in the process of waiting. So don't just sit back, uh, do nothing and say that I'm being patient, I'm waiting. No. Do something while in that process of what? Waiting. Do something while in that process of uh, waiting. So it is better to prepare for an opportunity that never comes than for an opportunity to find you when you are not prepared for it. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Kindly hit that subscription button on YouTube. Thank you.